to Outstanding 2021. I am Rabbi Claudia Kreiman. I use she, her pronouns, and I have the honor of hosting this evening program. I am here at TBZ, Temple Beth Zion in Brookline, and I'm so excited for this evening. Thank you so much to each of you for being here tonight. By joining us this evening, you provide vital support to Keshet and help to make every Jewish community in this country a place where LGBTQ Jews truly belong. As a congregational rabbi here in Boston, I have had the privilege of learning from and growing with Keshet for many years. I know that this congregation, TVZ, where I serve as senior rabbi, was one of the first Jewish communities in Boston to work with Keshet, bringing LGBTQ speakers to tell their stories, training staff and lay leaders in how to build a community of belonging, learning, how to take on LGBTQ civil rights issues in our social justice work. None of this would have been possible without Keshet. We come together tonight to celebrate Keshet's work and to honor leaders who have paved the way forward. My colleague, Rabbi Becky Silverstein, the LeMay family, Mimi, Joe, Jay, Eli, and Lucia, and our own Edith Klein. Keshet has played a lot of roles over our 25-year history, from LGBTQ Jewish speed dating, isn't that cool? To making allies out of opponents to standing on the front lines of LGBTQ rights movement. You are going to see soon a terrific video that tells some of our history. Many of you here tonight have been with us on this journey for many years and helped build and shape Keshet along the way. Others are newer to Keshet. We welcome and applaud all of us. This work takes all of us, and I am thrilled that every day, thanks to Keshet, there are more and more people committed to making a Jewish community and a world that cherishes, not just includes or welcome, but cherishes queer Jews. That is the Jewish community and the world that Keshet stands for and that you make possible. Keshet staff and leaders work for LGBTQ equality and belonging across the U.S. and in every Jewish community. Synagogues, Hebrew schools, day schools, youth groups, summer camps, social service organizations, arts organizations, you name it. Through training, education, and advocacy, Keshet trains leaders to build Jewish communities where LGBTQ people can show up as their full selves and truly belong. Keshet mobilizes those Jewish leaders and all our communities to advocate for LGBTQ civil rights. And for younger members of our community, Keshet creates spaces where LGBTQ Jewish teens and college students can feel safe and whole and powerful. I am so proud to share that TBZ my community, my congregation, was one of the first synagogues in Boston to celebrate a be mitzvah, not a bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah, but, but a be mitzvah for a young person a few years ago. And I remember that day as a moment that we not only celebrated the simcha of this magnificent young person in our community, but we celebrated a community that cherishes LGBTQ people. Thanks to Keshet, we and thousands of other synagogues across North America know how to create communities where LGBTQ people of all ages feel a sense of home. And still, there's much work to be done, especially in support of our transgender family. Trans Day of Remembrance is this Shabbat, November 20. At least 43 trans, non-binary, or gender non-conforming people have been killed violently in the U.S. this year so far that we know of. The majority of these precious lives lost are black of Latinx women. I invite you to take a moment of silence as I light this candle for our community. I'm going to take a moment to light it.
I invite you to take a moment of silence with this candle to honor those we have lost and vow in their memory to never stop fighting for a world where all of us can live in safety and with dignity. By clicking the link to the left of your screen or, visit, or visiting keshetonline.org slash tdoor, you can find Keshet Transgender Day of Remembrance Resources. I hope everyone here will join Keshet and Svara, traditionally radical and queer yeshiva, on Thursday night for some trans-centered Torah learning. You can register at keshetonline.org slash tdoor. You also you will also get an invitation in the follow-up email after tonight. I am honored to be here with you all tonight to lift up Keshet work and celebrate our extraordinary honorees. Thank you to our generous sponsors, to our host committee, and to each of you for honoring us with your support and your presence. I am now thrilled to introduce the one and only Michael Tweedy, who is one of tonight's honorary chairs, along with Rabbi Sharon Cohen Anisfeld, Faith Soloway, Joy Soloway, and Dr. Norman Spack and Dr. Judith Feldman. You may know Michael Tweedy from his acclaimed books, The Cooking Gin, or Kosher Soul, or the document documentary High on the Hog, or the kids' show Waffles and Mochi, or from Keshet's LGBTQ Jewish Heroes poster series. Tonight, he joins me in welcoming you to Outstanding. Good evening. I'm Michael W. Twitty, and I'm delighted to be an honorary co-chair for tonight's Outstanding 2021 program. I'd like to share my appreciation for my fellow co-chairs. Rabbi Sharon Cohen Anisfeld, Faith Soloway, Joey Soloway, Dr. Norman Spack, and Dr. Judith Feldman for their support of tonight's Keshet program. A special thank you to our fabulous host committee. You helped bring us together tonight. To our incredibly generous sponsors, your support is building a world in which belonging, equality, and justice for LGBTQ Jews and our families and communities and allies. I hope that everyone will click the program book link on the screen for a full list of tonight's committee members and sponsors. Finally, I want to thank all of tonight's honorees and wish them a mazel tov. Your presence inspires us and honors us. The world we live in, the work you do, are integral to creating community in which all LGBTQ Jews and our families and friends can live with full equality, justice, pride, and dignity. Thank you. Wow, thank you again to Michael Tweedy and our other honorary chairs, all our host committee members and generous sponsors, and all of you. Before I introduce our next guest, I want to encourage everyone to take pictures tonight. You can use one of these. My favorite is the unicorn one. Um, share them on social media and use the hashtag outstanding2021. You might just see your photo highlighted in the program. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce Seth Marnin, Chair of the Board of Directors of Keshet. Seth is a longtime leader and civil rights advocate. In addition to his work with Keshet, Seth is currently the Director of Training and Education for the Office of Equal Opportunity and Affirmative Action at Columbia University. Welcome, Seth. Thank you, Rav Claudia and Michael Twitty. And thank you to our other honorary chairs, host committee members, and sponsors. We couldn't do this without you. And a big mazel tov to Rabbi Becky Silverstein, the LeMay family, and of course, to our own Edith Klein. Hi, my name is Seth Marnin. My pronouns are he, him, his, and I am Zooming 
shindigging in from the Upper West Side of Manhattan. I proudly serve as board chair of Keshet, and something that I'm going to take with me from this pandemic is, sound familiar? How many Zoom meetings have we participated in over the past 20 or so months? And here we still are. I will tell you, we wrestled with this decision. We so wish to gather in person, but we chose for the safety of the community to remain online. The silver lining, of course, is that we are able to celebrate with all of you from near and far. Now, those of you who have ever heard me speak know that I can't help but offer a few words of Torah. And I'm willing to bet that when some of you heard me say we wrestled with this decision, you knew where this was going. In this week's Parsha, Vayishlach, we read that Jacob wrestled with an unknown stranger, maybe an angel. After they fight, Jacob demands a blessing and is given a new name. He is told that he will now be known as Israel, having wrestled with God and man and prevailed. Two names, Jacob and Israel. When he's afraid, insecure, unsure of himself, he is Jacob. And when he is strong, confident in himself as himself, he is Israel. Torah, our liturgy and tradition use both names. And I think this is because he, like all of us, continued both to wrestle, to struggle when he is afraid and unsure, and to be strong when he shows up as himself. This year, Despite our individual and collective fears, and surely many, many moments of being unsure, Keshet has been able to lean into our strengths and prevail. And we have been able to do so because of you, your commitment to our work and your generous support. It is my privilege this evening to share with you how we together have made a difference. Keshet's work creates space for LGBTQ Jews and their families to be strong in themselves and as themselves, whether through our institutional change work, our advocacy, or our work with LGBTQ youth. You heard last year about how we were able to pivot at the beginning of the pandemic, moving our in-person programs online and reaching LGBTQ Jews and particularly young people who would have not otherwise been able to connect with us, literally zooming in from their closets. This year, another surprise opportunity in our online programming came, this time, summer camps. Opening camps this year meant not only all the regular intensive training for staff, but also new COVID safety protocols to keep campers and counselors safe. But you know what else many of them included? That's right, this year we figured out how to reach summer camps at scale with our camping out training videos featuring our fabulous education and training staff. We reached 21 camps this way, about half of them completely new to Keshet. Hundreds of camp staff now had better LGBTQ inclusive language and better information about gender and sexuality for thousands of campers. And I can personally attest, camp drop-off was different this year. There were rapid COVID tests and instead of bringing our campers to their bunks, we were met on the lawn by their counselors. Except this year, those counselors had their pronouns on their name tags, having learned from Keshet that this is just one way to signal to campers, we see you. We've known for years that Jewish summer camps help create a more vibrant Jewish future. Our work with camps, which will be expanding next spring, helps ensure that all our kids will be a part of that future. When we talk about our institutional change work, whether these exciting new opportunities with camps or our programs with JCCs, day schools, and other Jewish institutions, we talk about meeting communities where they are on their journey to LGBTQ equality and belonging. Let me tell you what that looks like in one liberal reform synagogue community. Rabbi Mark Kaiserman, an out gay rabbi at the Reform Temple of Forest Hills in Queens, New York, reached out to us. He wanted our assistance to help their students be better allies to their trans classmate and help parents talk to their kids. After the Keshet session, one of the sixth graders came out as, trans as a transgender girl to her class. She said, you've known me up till now as he, him, and now I'd like you to use she, her. The students all shouted mazel tov and burst into applause. This is what strength looks like. I am particularly proud of how Keshet has flexed its advocacy muscle this past year in partnership with organizations like the National Council for Jewish, of Jewish Women, the Religious Action Center of Reform Judaism, Jewish Women International, and the Anti-Defamation League. We mobilized Jews in all 50 states to call on their senators to pass the Equality Act. Let me say that again. Every 
single state. And we didn't just flex our national muscle. We were on the ground in North Carolina with Carolina Jews for Justice. Our community mobilization staff helped them with training, resources, coaching, and connections so that they could effectively raise their voices to advocate for an inclusive anti-discrimination law. The online space we created for youth and that our youth created for themselves continued this year. We again reached thousands of young people. For some, these spaces are literally life-saving. And I wanna tell you about one young person, Kendall, a 16-year-old lesbian from Maryland who first connected with Kesha in January, 2021 through our Monday night hangouts after months of social and emotional health struggles due to the isolation of the pandemic. She quickly became a regular presence. It was the first space she could really show up as herself. Kendall recently told us, Kesha pretty much saved my life. I felt empty without purpose alone, but now I have LGBTQ Jewish friends and I'm learning more about Jewish and gay culture. Keshet was actually the first time I started off being my true authentic self, sharing my struggles, my concerns, my hobbies, things I'm proud of, and much more. This has allowed me to gain self-confidence. I used to stay in my room all day, knowing I was alive only because of my own personal guilt I'd feel for leaving my family behind, trapped in my own mind, yearning for an escape. This organization is more important to me than you could ever imagine. My mental health has improved exponentially since getting involved. The impact Keshet has had on me is indescribable. When I say it saved my life, I mean it. If this is not prevailing, creating space where young people like Kendall can connect to their own strength and resilience, I don't know what is. And our youth are showing up as themselves in their own strengths in myriad other ways, and they are teaching us their own Torah. This summer, Keshet's youth team worked with a group of trans and non-binary teens to create a series of teachings in the weeks between Tisha B'Av, a day of communal mourning, and Rosh Hashanah. One teen, Is Perlman, described not growing up in a particularly religious household and not finding solace in religion. As a Jew of color, they felt disconnected from the Jewish spaces around them. Their experience with a Keshet Shabbaton changed that. At the Shabbaton, they were introduced to the concept of B'Tselem Elohim, being made in God's image. Being able to see their transness as something holy radically shifted their self-perception. Their trans and Jewish identities do not just coexist, they are inextricable from one another and sacred. And we continue to wrestle with and strengthen our own and the larger Jewish community's commitment to racial equity and justice. Over the past year, we have launched several initiatives and events with a focus on building community among LGBTQ Jews of color. We heard from LGBTQ Jewish youth of color directly that they would benefit from JOC only youth space. And for JOC LGBTQ adults, we partnered with two LGBTQ JOC facilitators to de design and implement several different programs, including a four part series focused on spiritual healing, as well as an additional four programs that were focused on community building and creating space for folks to connect and socialize. We're gathering feedback from this pilot year to inform the coming year's program. I am so proud of the ways in which Keshet has continued to wrestle with challenges, support Jewish LGBTQ youth, Jewish institutions, and advocacy organizations as they wrestle, so that we can create a world where every single Jew can show up as their full selves, be blessed, and prevail. Thank you for all the ways you support Keshet. Hazak, hazak, venit, hazak. Be strong, be strong, and may we be strengthened. I am now delighted to introduce and welcome Kohenet Kashira Halev Fife, who will give you another glimpse of the impact of Keshet's work. Kashira describes herself as a queer, biracial Jewish woman who sprinkles sparkles, disrupts expectations, counters oppression, and offers blessings wherever she goes. She is the founder and co-leader of Kesher Pittsburgh, executive director of the Kohenet Hebrew Priestess Institute, and program director of the Olive Kesher Fellowship. She also serves as the lead facilitator for Keshet's own LGBTQ Jewish Youth of Color programming and has participated in Keshet's other LGBTQ Jews of Color programs. Please welcome Kashira. Thanks, Seth. Good evening, everybody. 
I'm Kohenet Kashira Halev Fife. I use the she and they series pronouns, and I'm coming to you from Osage and Haudenosaunee land, also called Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I am a biracial queer Jewish woman, and I'm honored to work with Keshet as lead facilitator for LGBTQ Jewish Youth of Color programming as part of the JOC Teen Initiative collaboration as a Keshet contract trainer, and of course, as a participant in a variety of Keshet's programs for LGBTQ Jews of color. I feel so grateful for all the ways in which Keshet has invited me to become involved. As a participant, I have really appreciated the way that Keshet prioritized creating these kinds of spaces and how warm and hospitable each of them has been. I think back to the virtual series on self-care for a small group of LGBTQ Jews of color. Those three sessions provided an opportunity to connect with others like me in a space that was warm and connective, setting a tone which encouraged us to be self-reflective and vulnerable. Until I was there, I had no idea how much I needed this kind of respite and nourishment. Not only have I had the good fortune of participating in Keshet programs, I've also had the opportunity to work as part of the team. Facilitating the Jewish Youth of Color program last year was an absolute joy. Not only did these young people teach and inspire me each time we met, but it also gave me the opportunity to be part of the Keshet team and to live the values of the organization in a way that's truly meaningful. When I began working with the youth, we spent some time just getting to know each other. Our first virtual gathering was just over a year ago, November 5th, 2020, an evening just after the election, but before it was actually called. I remember it being such a tender time with so much hanging in the balance. Over the weeks and months that followed, we gathered regularly, sometimes hanging out, sharing artwork and book recommendations, or talking about new hairstyles. Other times, the tone was more serious. We talked about Israel-Palestine and lent support through various personal challenges. Some of those conversations were potent, and some of them were mundane, but they were still precious because the sum total of all those times together created a sort of intimacy that's not easy to come by. I remember one conversation in particular which drove the point home. One evening I asked the youth to help me as I was program planning. If I could bring anyone here as a guest speaker or a workshop facilitator, who would you like to meet? I asked them. One young person replied, really any trans, non-binary or queer Jew of color. At first I was puzzled by this response because I mistook their openness as disinterest. They must have registered my micro expression because they quickly followed by saying seriously, Kashira, it would be amazing to meet anyone like that. Because when we get to be with trans, non-binary, or queer Jewish adults of color, it means that they survived. It gives us an example of what might be possible for us too. I dare say that's the only testimonial we need. This program, this organization has such a profound impact on so many. Not only does it create opportunities for LGBTQ people of all ages and races to be exposed to and inspired by what's possible, it also provides spaces for us to connect, build relationships, dream together, and live into those possibilities as realities. Though I work with an amazing collection of organizations, Keshet is one of my favorites because everyone I've worked with does such a stellar job of exemplifying the Keshet ethos in making me feel valued and appreciated, not in spite of who I am, but because of who I am. And I know I'm not the only one who feels this way. So many of us feel that we have to show only one side of ourselves in order to be accepted in Jewish spaces or BIPOC spaces or queer spaces to the contrary, Keshet is unique in that it rolls out the rainbow carpet for each of us with the explicit message that we are welcome and wanted in our fullness. In a world where we might otherwise feel that we have to hide parts of ourselves, Keshet not only welcomes each individual as holy, but also creates a space where we can come together in celebration of our Judaism. 
to find our people, to revel in a sense of belonging. I am proud and honored to be part of Keshet, and I cannot wait to see what the future brings. Thank you. Although Keshet had to again pivot to an online gala and make changes to their program, one thing has remained constant. The desire to honor and celebrate the LeMay family, Rabbi Becky Silverstein and Edith Klein. The first two honor being presented tonight are the Chacham Lev Award. In the Torah, the concept of Chacham Lev suggests that any enormous task, any holy work, requires both skill and spirit, head and heart. These awards recipients have shown the true meaning of using head and heart in advocating for and modeling LGBTQ equality in their public lives. I am delighted to welcome Kaden Mohammed, a name that is likely familiar to many of you, as he worked on staff at Keshet for over four years before assuming his current role as the Client and Community Impact Manager at Positively Partners. Please welcome Kaden to present our first award of the evening. Thank you so much, Rav Claudia, and thank you to everyone who is here tonight. It is a true honor and pleasure to be with all of you. I'm especially grateful to be here tonight to be able to speak about Jay LeMay and his family. Jay LeMay started sharing his gender identity at two, and he started transitioning at four with the support of his parents, Mimi and Joe, and that of his siblings, Eli and Lucia. Together, their family has shared their story, reaching hundreds of thousands of people, both through Mimi's, Mimi's book on, and on NPR and NBC. Their family has fought for trans and non-binary kids everywhere, especially through the years when their home state, right here where I live in Massachusetts, threatened to repeal trans rights legislation, and during the Trump administration when trans and queer rights were significantly rolled back and threatened nationally. Mimi, Joe, Eli, Jay, and Lucia, we're so grateful for your courage. At a time in our world when bigots are far too comfortable making LGBTQ young people and their families and the communities that affirm them a political target, you have been willing to stand up for justice. Your family has demonstrated the power of unconditional love even in the face of bigotry and discrimination. By becoming public voices and sharing your personal stories, you have helped to give trans issues real faces. You've reached the hearts of millions of people and you've shown them what it looks like to trust young people and to love them for who they are. I've personally been able to hear the LeMay speak a number of times, both eloquently and vulnerably, about the importance and real life impacts of trans inclusion and trans rights. I've sat on a panel or two over the years with Mimi, and I've stood with their whole family and others on the front lines in the fight for trans rights in Massachusetts. And each time I have been in awe of their family's love and support for Jay and for each other, but also that of the whole trans and non-binary community. As a trans person myself, I have a deep appreciation and an admiration for Jay's ability to live so fully in his identity at such a young age, to be able to believe in himself, to proudly speak up for trans lives and for justice and equity with courage and with openness and for the rest, the way the rest of the LeMay family has continued to show up at his side day after day and year after year. Thank you all for giving me and so many other trans and non-binary people across Massachusetts and beyond hope for our futures. I hope that you will see Keshet as a place where you can always turn for community and to spread your good work. On behalf of Keshet, I am so thrilled and honored to present you with this 2021 Hachme Lev Award. Thank you so much, Kaden. I've got this beautiful award here. I just wanted to show it really quickly. It said, it says, Kol Yisrael Arevim Zebazeh. We are all responsible for each other. Thank you. And thank you, Edith. Thank you, Rabbi Claudia, Stephen, Keshet, and our community who's here today. Congratulations and gratitude to Edith and Rabbi Becky. We are honored to stand beside and on the shoulders of giants. 
When Edie asked me who I would like to present our award, I said, there's a young man who inspired me greatly during our fight for trans rights right here in Massachusetts. He always spoke with such poise and clarity, and he clearly cared so deeply about our children that I remember thinking, I hope my son grows up to be like him. Caden, that is you. Thank you again. I hope all our children grow up to fight for each other. It is the young people that we do this for. Like many stories of advocacy, ours started off at home. The knowledge that my husband Joe and I had that we needed to fight to ensure that Jay and later our non-binary child Eli grew up in a world where they would never face the discrimination that gender diverse people do today. But it didn't stay at home. As I read and learned, and we met more members of this remarkable community from all walks of life and across the globe, we began to share their vision of a future where neither who we are or who we love poses a barrier to the achievement of a full equal life. Our small goal grew exponentially and became nothing short of everyone and everywhere. It remains so no matter the setbacks. But there are other reasons we advocate. We each bring into this journey our past, our unique formative experiences. And for me, this was my Judaism. Growing up in an ultra-Orthodox Jewish community, I often felt that my life was set on a narrow path between two tall guardrails of ta'aseh and lo ta'aseh, thou shalt and thou shalt not. Sadly, the thou shalt not included the, the aspects that were most beautiful and fundamental of our human nature that do not always conform to society's expectations. In my case, this was a desire as a woman to both learn and interpret the Torah like the men. Having left orthodoxy in my early 20s, I carried with me into motherhood a sense of abandonment. My God, my faith, I assumed wished nothing to do with a woman who would not accept her place. All my children are a gift to me. Each has increased my understanding of my own soul, my nishama. In the struggle of my gender magical children to live authentically, I have seen even more, truly witnessed that who I am, who we are, is far more than the sum of our parts, a collection of flesh and bone. I have also learned that what we are, or what others thought we were, must make way for what we will become. Beyond that, on a personal level, I discovered that I still had a place in Jewish life. That the fundamentals of our faith, not the guardrails, but the springboards to that vision of a better future, tikkun olam, were indeed a part of my continued journey. And so too was a God who had given me as a mother the gift of children who would need my nonconformity to fight for theirs. I am truly shepping Nachas for my family tonight. My family. And one of us who is not here tonight, but sends their regrets. My family who you see here and the one that you don't. And my family in the broader sense. Kol Yisrael Arevim Zebazeh. Or should we say, call b'nei chayim arevim zebazeh. Every living being is responsible for all others. We are honored to be part of this fight and to be walking this road with you, our heroes. This year, let us go Michael l'chayel. Let us do even more to protect our precious youth. Toda Raba, thank you so much. Michael Lechael, Mazal Tov to the Lemes on this well-deserved honor. Your family's bravery and persistence in the face of adversity is truly an example of how to build change. 
le dor va dor, from generation to generation. Next, it gives me such joy to welcome Noam Siegel, a Keshet youth leader and a senior at the Charles E. Smith Jewish Day School in Maryland. Noam has a passion for musical theater, especially drag, and played a key leadership role in Keshet's first ever virtual Shabbaton. I am delighted to welcome Noam to share a few words about his connection to Keshet. Hi, everyone. My name is Noam, or Queen Ultraviolet, and I use he, they pronouns. I'm so excited to share a little bit about my journey with you all tonight. I grew up going to modern Orthodox synagogues and feeling really connected with my Jewish community and my faith. I've been going to pluralistic Jewish day schools since kindergarten, and I've always been surrounded by Judaism in different forms. During the end of middle school, I started throwing myself into the Jewish community, and I took my religiosity much further. I was going to services every day, wearing skirts and long sleeves, and focusing much of my energy into following the halacha and talking about Judaism. During my freshman year of high school, I realized I was queer. I came out as gay and was met with mixed reactions from my religious friends, which caused me to completely reject Judaism. I started exploring the different possibilities and ways of expressing myself, and that's when I discovered Keshet. I saw a flyer for the 2020 East Coast Shabbaton on Instagram, and I knew I had to go. Meeting other queer and Jewish teenagers sounded amazing, so I gathered a little group of queer friends from school, and we all registered. That weekend really changed my life forever. While I hadn't admitted anyone my struggles with gender identity yet, I secretly registered for that Shabbaton as non-binary. When I got there, I was bombarded with unapologetically trans and queer teenagers, and I immediately felt like I was with my people. Talking with everyone at the Shabbaton was so eye-opening. There were so many people who shared the feelings that I had, and I realized that my queer identity and my Jewish identity could exist in harmony. I brought that feeling of intersectionality and my love for queerness home with me, and I held on to it. But three weeks later, the entire country shut down due to the pandemic. While everyone else seemed to be baking banana bread and watching Tiger King, I was, well, doing drag, but also struggling with my identity. <laughs> As the pandemic went on and everyone started understanding the severity of the situation, Keshet began hosting online events on Zoom. I went to as many events as I could and spending time with Keshet, even online, made me feel so much less alone. I got more involved and was given the opportunity to interview Ms. Cracker, Alexis Michelle, and also plan the Keshet virtual Shabbaton. This was a community of people who were celebrating me for my queerness and my drag, understanding my identity instead of finding it confusing. Keshet really helped me through the pandemic and made me feel like my identity wasn't something to hide, but rather something to embrace. The past two years of isolating because of COVID, participating in Keshet events, and learning to express myself authentically are what finally helped me come out as trans. Without this community, I don't think I would be in the place I am today. I'm so grateful for the support and opportunity that Keshet has given me. To present the next award this evening, I'm excited to welcome Joanna Ware. For seven years, she worked on staff at Keshet guiding Jewish institutions, large and small, through organizational change and processes. She also was a regular staff member at Keshet's LGBTQ and ally Teen Shabbatonim. Joanna now leads the Jewish Liberation Fund as their founding director. Please welcome Joanna. We apologize for some technical difficulties. We are figuring this out. It's part of the pandemic um, new life and we move on. So uh, we'll go back to Joanna later, but now it is my pleasure to invite all of you to enjoy and look at what it did and Keshet have accomplished from the very beginning. We have come a very long way. So I invite you to watch this video and remember you, each of you, make all of this possible. Keshet provides a really empowering space for folks to question their senses of self, their identities. I was so afraid. It's so easy to be afraid of the idea of being queer. Keshet makes it an exciting thing. You get to join this new community of folks who are here to love and support you. 
When I was starting to build Keshet, the climate was so drastically different than it is today. Much of our early work was really, you know, proving just the relevance and reality of our existence. When I think back to those days, I, I think back with a lot of sadness to all the Jewish educators and Jewish professionals who were queer, who told me that they would never come out in their places of employment because they were convinced that they would be fired immediately. And for people to understand that not to name us, not to see us, not to explicitly recognize and care for us meant that we would not feel like we belong. Growing up as a young Jew in New York, going to day schools and going to synagogue and being in a relatively traditional household, I don't think I gave much thought to anyone who wasn't like me at all. When I was ordained in 2002, I began my pulpit work as an assistant rabbi in Sharon, Massachusetts. And luckily enough, Keshet in its earlier days was really focused on the Boston Jewish community. I found myself in the position of being a leader, not an expert, but being open. And I think openness is the big gift of this work. Keshet's mission, per se, is to teach the teachers. It's to create a generation of people who can then teach others so that the Jewish community eventually becomes organically accepting of the LGBTQ community. We had a lot of resistance to, as we started to do education and training work with Jewish educational institutions. Plenty of organizations shut me down outright. I mean, I remember it was a kind of laughable triumph when our first Hebrew school gave us 15 minutes on the agenda of a teacher's meeting for a training. So things have come a long way since that. I mean, now we do day-long trainings, year-long engagements with, with institutions. But again, I mean, that was about kind of making the case that like, there's work to do here. up in a world that does everything it can to tell you that trans people are bad, that there's something wrong with them, that hurts you, that eats at your soul. And it hit me hard. Going into the Shabbaton and reading prayers that thanked God for making me trans, I had never seen anything like that before. I was so used to being angry at myself. And for the first time, I was like, maybe there's something magical about this. I'm really proud that we've created these spaces where teens feel like they can be themselves and, and, and feel powerful and beautiful. And it's like amazing to hear a trans girl say, I felt beautiful for the first time. I actually was a part of a group for Jewish queer youth of color through Keshet, which was really incredible. It was so empowering. I really began growing into myself, and now I'm very happy to say that I am grateful to be alive and to be trans. Every rabbinical school has been touched by the work of inclusion. Even those that don't want to be have been affected by the incredibly important work of Keshet. Keshet's work has made it possible for more and more young people, from children to adolescents, to come out in their communities. They have the confidence to do that now. And when there is a question, now those communities know where to go. I first encountered Keshet at a screening of the film Hineni, which was Keshet's first major production. And I believe it was in 2006 when Edith came to Northwest DC. 
So what unfolded over the coming year or two was a process of our bringing on staff to enable us to really push the film out nationally, to develop a curriculum for use with kids grades 7 through 12 to accompany the film. And we started really, really growing as an organization because we were being bombarded with requests for film screenings from all around the country and around the world. Clearly, we decided there was a place for us to play a national role. And so it was really the film Hineni, which propelled us to say, Hineni, we are here in the national arena and we have something to contribute. One of Keshet's successes that I'm most proud of is our work on the Yes on 3 campaign to preserve transgender rights in Massachusetts in 2018. There was a question put on the ballot that would have stripped trans folks of their rights in the state. And Keshet worked hard um, together with hundreds and hundreds of Jewish communities throughout the state to mobilize people to express their opposition to this hateful legislation. At the height of the campaign, we had over 70% of all synagogues and Jewish organizations in the state involved, which we're told is more than any other faith or ethnic group's mobilization in support of trans rights in American history. I started working and making some online programming for queer Jewish youth, and the most powerful thing about that to me was that so many young people who would not have been able to access cash-out programming before were finally able to. There were young people who were zooming in, hiding from their parents and from their families, but they were able to find solace in cash -Ed. I also am so grateful for all the leadership opportunities that cash -Ed has given me. I get to work with the most amazing staff making programming and I always feel like I and so many other youth, we feel so empowered by the staff at Keshet. Keshet provides the safe space for the Jewish community to engage one-on-one -on -one or in small groups and everything where they don't feel intimidated, where they feel welcome, where they're not afraid to come in and speak their mind and then be dismissed and have to leave ashamed or anything like that. It's not an easy thing to do. Edith has navigated these waters beautifully, and so I hold Keshet up as a, as a model for this kind of work, and I hope other organizations learn from it. I have a few moments in my personal life that I, I deeply uh, attribute to Keshet, and among the most tender of moments for me was when a student of mine, a young student, came out to me and I was able, without having to dig deep into the recesses of something someone said to me before, to simply say, Mazel tov, I'm so glad. Tell me what that means, and tell me how we can celebrate your moment together. People often speak of one of Keshet's greatest strengths as the way that we meet people where they are. We meet people where they are, and then we gently, and sometimes a little bit less gently, push them to go further. And we do that because we come from a sensibility and a perspective that has deep faith that when it comes to most people, if you invite them to be their better selves, they will. And have just seen people stretch beyond what they thought possible. Keshet is, not to be dramatic, but Keshet is saving young people's lives. And I know that because it saved my life. I know other folks for whom cash has saved their lives. What is left to be done in the Jewish community? Everything. What I think we need to do is first look in the mirror and think really closely about how ready I am to give of myself for the sake of someone else. It begins in our own hearts knowing that the work is immense and we're not exempt from starting. I see so much of the work of Keshet over the years as a work of shifting communal consciousness, a work of shifting the Jewish imagination. What exists in only a small number of Jewish communities still is a culture of real embrace and belonging. 
And that's the change gap in which you know, a lot of our work happens. Some of that work is about helping leaders see that tolerance isn't enough, because of course, LGBTQ Jews, just like all human beings, don't want to be tolerated. We want to be embraced, we want to feel at home, we want to feel like we belong. My dear friend, Jamie Crass, director of youth programs, told me this once, and I will never forget it. She said, the reason I work at Keshet is so that, there, that we can create a world in which there is no need for there to be a Keshet. So my ultimate dream goal is for there to be such a like, just and liberatory world that we won't need Keshet, that every space will be Keshet. Hello, and thank you for hanging with us through these technical difficulties. Uh, my name is Joanna Ware. The first time he and I spoke 11 years ago, I made a complete fool of myself. I was still fairly new at Keshet and had just started doing education and training work. Becky reached out to Keshet to collaborate on a training for the religious school at the synagogue where he worked. During our first intake call, I asked him if the students saw any out LGBTQ people, adults within the community. He laughed a little awkwardly, paused and said, um, well, me, whoops, wholly internalized heteronormativity, Batman. Here I was the supposed expert and I had assumed he was a cis straight ally. I apologized for my misstep and with a warmth, grace, candor and humility that I've learned is simply his way. He directed us back to the task at hand. If you Google Rabbi Becky Silverstein, you'll find a lot of media that emphasizes how he's been a trailblazer as a trans leader in the Jewish world. And that's all true. Yet as someone who has witnessed that journey up close, I can tell you that what sets Becky apart, however, isn't simply who he is or what identities he holds, but rather how he approaches work. As a longtime session educator, communal rabbinic leader, Shabbaton rabbi in residence and board member, Becky embodies the best of Keshet's approach to the work of creating wholly LGBTQ inclusive Jewish communities, celebratory, liberatory communities. Becky is led by a deep commitment to Torah, exemplified by his ability to meet people precisely where they are with that warmth and grace, while also offering an uncompromising, aspirational vision of liberation for queer and trans people. Whether he is mentoring LGBTQ young people, guiding a community or his colleagues through the hard work of systemic change, teaching rigorous, Torah through the magnetic possibility expanding views and wisdom and Torah of queer and trans people or helping to steer the ship in his time on the Keshet board. Becky's vision, his character, integrity, authenticity, and his leadership are simply transformative. It's fairly easy to get attention for being the first something. It is much harder to nourish a pathway for those journeying behind and alongside you that doesn't ask us to compromise ourselves along the way. And that is what Becky does. It is my profound honor and privilege to present the Hacham Lev Award to my dear friend, colleague, and teacher, Rabbi Becky Silverstein. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. I'm so grateful to Keshet for being a catalyst for much of the work we've done together, as well as our friendship. Thank you to Keshet for this honor. It is a true source of joy to be recognized alongside the LeMay family and a decline. To the LeMay family, may you continue to be an example of what it means to live lives of wholeness and to work to create the conditions for all people to do so. To Adit, as others will share more about this evening, your leadership and Keshet's work has had a profound impact on the Jewish community as a whole, as well as on queer and trans Jews, including myself. 
Thank you for helping to build a world where queerness and gender expansiveness are not just included, but embraced and celebrated as a part of what makes any given individual and our tradition holy. Many in the Jewish world know me as a trans rabbi and for my work at the intersection of trans and queer community and Jewish community. What perhaps fewer people know is that I identify deeply as a lover of Torah. So in approaching these remarks, I did something totally predictable. I looked at the places in Torah where the phrase Chacham Lev appears. The phrase occurs a bunch towards the latter part of Exodus as a description for those who are undertaking the tasks of crafting the Mishkan, God's holy dwelling place, and its associated vessels, tools, and priestly garments. In one verse, God is telling Moses about the team of people ready to make all that into a reality. We read, Uvalev kol chacham lev natati chokhma ve'asu et kol asher tziviticha. In the heart of all those who are wise-hearted, I have placed wisdom, that they will do all that I have commanded you. Rabbis pick up this verse in Masechet Brachot, where it's used as a proof text for the teaching that ein hakadosh baruchu noten chokhma ela lemish yesh bo chokhma. The Holy One only gives wisdom to those who already have wisdom. From the Torah, we learn that being or possessing a mechacham lev is a qualification for crafting the containers that serve to facilitate a connection between the community and the divine through which Kedusha, holiness, is manifest in the world. From the rabbis, we learn that it is also a precondition for receiving more wisdom. We might then understand chacham lev as having the capacity or potential to build and deepen relationships between individuals, communities, and the divine as well as an inclination towards bringing more wisdom into the world. What Keshet knows, and I believe what they are honoring me for knowing and living, is that all of us are Chacham Lev, deep sources of wisdom and transformation. The struggle is that not all of us see and uplift the wisdom in each other's hearts, or more broadly, work to create the conditions for that wisdom to be brought out into the world. This is the essence of the additional wisdom that God imparts to those who are crafting the Mishkan and that the rabbis teach that those who are wise, meaning all of us, have access to. A few years ago, when I was asked to give the pitch at Outstanding, I shared with everyone that the reason Naomi and I support Keshet is because Keshet and us are mission aligned. This is that mission, to see and uplift the wisdom of the queer and trans members of the Jewish community and to work to create the conditions for that wisdom to be brought out into the world in its fullest emanation. We see this in Keshet's transformative cultural change work, the leadership projects, the trainings at camps and other Jewish institutions, the organizational work to address structural oppression like transphobia, racism, and ableism within its organizational bounds and outside of them. We see this in programming for young people that centers their leadership and supports them as they find and grow their voices. We see this in Keshet's advocacy work, their effort to mobilize Jewish communities here in Massachusetts for public accommodations for trans people, and to mobilize Jewish communities across the United States in support of the Equality Act. I come to this work grounded in the belief that in order for our world to be one in which all people live lives of dignity, we need all of our wisdom. I try to live that Torah into the world every day. Thank you, Keshet, for seeing and uplifting my wisdom and that work. Mazal tov, Rabbi Becky Silverstein. And again, I want to say mazal tov to the Lemay family. You are all chokmei lev, people who are wise-hearted in your approach to justice work and all you do to create a better world. Thank you for showing us the path forward. And I'm now excited to invite to join me here, come, 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 Jamie Kras, uh, Director of Youth Programs at Keshet, who will be introducing the award for our dear Edith Klein. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. As Ralph Claudia mentioned, I am Jamie Kras. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the Director of Youth Programs at Keshet. I am beyond delighted to be here with you all this evening. So 118 chapters into Tehillim, or Psalms, we encounter a promise that I think resonates particularly powerfully with our community. Evan ma'asu habonim ha'ita pina. 
The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. In other words, the stone which the builders rejected has become the very stone on which the entire strength, durability, and existence of the rest of the foundation depends. In just this one little sentence, we encounter a story, the triumph of resilience and perseverance over rejection and ostracism. It is the beauty of this triumph that inspired the creation of the Roche Pina Award, bestowed upon a Keshet leader whose extraordinary contributions have provided us with a strong foundation to fulfill our mission. Tonight, we honor Edith Klein for her 20 years of leadership at Keshet. Just 20 years ago, LGBTQ Jews were disengaging from Jewish life, unsupported amidst waves of anti-LGBTQ legislation and violence, unwelcome within most Jewish institutions unless we checked our LGBTQ identities at the door, and unvalued as our whole selves. Edith, you experienced and witnessed this rejection firsthand, and it's no wonder so many LGBTQ Jews felt defeated but for you, that rejection was not a source of defeat, but a source of motivation. Harnessing the urgency and importance of what was happening, you transformed a spare bedroom in your apartment into the first office of an organization that, through your leadership, would become the lifeline, village, and movement that Keshet is today. As the founding executive director, and as our current president and CEO, you truly are the cornerstone. And here's what the rest of that foundation you spent the past two decades building looks like. It looks like tens of thousands of Jewish leaders and organizations who collectively serve over five million people engaging in genuine LGBTQ affirming change work. It looks like thousands of people rising up in all 50 states to advocate for LGBTQ rights, many for the first time in their lives through our national and grassroots campaigns. It looks like thousands of youth finding sacred belonging at our Shabbatonim and online programs, growing to proudly own their LGBTQ Jewish identities and becoming agents for change within their own communities. It looks like many of those Shabbaton alumni proudly serving today on Keshet's professional team. It looks like every one of us knowing that if we are ever forced to leave our LGBTQ identities at the doors of our Jewish institutions, there will be a tidal wave of support here for us from Keshet. I wouldn't be here if not for you. And I know I am joined by many when I say, <clears throat> I would have never found true belonging within the Jewish community if not for how you've chosen to spend the past 20 years. From a local organization housed in a spare bedroom with a budget of $42,000 to a national organization with professionals in 11 states and a budget of $4 million. You didn't just dare to dream, you dared to do. And we can all imagine there were many moments when you could have quit when you could have stepped away. And I know you'll say you could have never done that. You'll say the work is too important to abandon. And we'll say it's because of your unwavering, truly remarkable commitment to justice. You blazed trails that I and countless other LGBTQ Jews have been able to follow to the rhythm of our own unique identities in a world that is more liberated and celebratory of who we truly are because of you. When we look at the epicenter of meaningful change in the Jewish community around LGBTQ belonging, we find Keshet. We find you, the cornerstone. And so on behalf of Keshet and with much emotion and honor, I am deeply proud to present you with the Rosh Pina Award in gratitude for all you have done for every single one of us. <laughs> and now, in celebration of this moment, Rabbi Sharon Cohen Annisfeld, president of Hebrew College and Edith's longtime friend, mentor, and rabbi, 
will be offering Edith a blessing in celebration of her 20th anniversary at Keshet. Thank you so much, Jamie. I'm so honored and grateful to be here tonight and um, want to wish all of the honorees a heartfelt mazel tov. And it's such a schut, such a privilege uh, to be able to offer this bracha to my former student, a longtime friend, colleague, and teacher. <clears throat> Quote, the first step is looking. The next step is creating change. Edith, I don't know if you remember, you wrote these words a few years ago <laughs> in a piece about Purim and the power of coming out, of speaking out, despite consequences. Like Esther, you suggested we have the opportunity to bravely take action through nothing less and nothing more than visibility, through seeing and being seen. It strikes me now that these words are a stunning description of the existential posture that has been at the heart of your own journey and that is hinted at in the Hebrew root contained within your name, Ein Dalid Eid Edith. Your name and your neshama are connected to the Hebrew root that means to witness. What does the act of witnessing entail? The first step is looking. The next step is creating change. You were four years old when you asked your great aunt about the blue numbers on her arm and she told you about the bad men who took her away. When you asked her why, all she said was, because I am a Jew. You were terrified, burdened with a knowledge you didn't, that you couldn't understand, and yet somehow that knowledge turned into a knowing, a deep knowing that you have carried with you your whole life. You've written, I was way too young to have to face that sense of vulnerability, but for whatever reason, I was able to move from that place of fear to a place of conviction about my purpose in the world. From that day forth, I knew that I was meant to advance justice in the world. The first step is looking. The next step is creating change. Your beloved Safta Margot passed away last week, about a month shy of her 100th birthday. I feel her presence with us tonight. She was one of your four grandparents who all survived the concentration camps and went on to build new lives after the war. You've spoken and written so beautifully about her bravery, her wisdom, her enormous heart her capacity to find joy and humor in the world alongside the pain that she carried having lost her parents at a young age. The awful moment when she was pushed off the cattle car upon arriving at Auschwitz and felt her mother's hand slip away. A moment that has reverberated throughout her life and yours. You said to me recently, quietly, as we were talking about the devastation of these last several years in American politics, that for you, it was the separation of families at the border. That was the moment a line was unforgivably crossed. The first step is looking. The next step is creating change. There are two great temptations when faced with cruelty and injustice. One is to look away. The other is to look and become frozen in grief or fear. 
you insistently, consistently, persistently refuse to do either. I think of the story of Lot's wife, nameless in the Torah itself. Her transgression or tragedy was looking, or more precisely, looking back. Looking back on the devastation that turned some of her family into refugees and took the lives of those who remained behind. Her daughters, their husbands, maybe grandchildren, nieces, nephews, surely friends, a world, worlds lost. She turns forever into a pillar of salt, a pillar of waterless tears, perhaps unwilling, perhaps unable to go on without the life-giving waters that allow grief to flow through us, without the life-giving waters that free us and allow us to move forward. The Midrash gives her a name, and it is Edith perhaps reminding us that she, too, was a witness. But as you have taught us again and again, the first step is looking. The next step is creating change. Edith, you have taught us what it means to be a loving and courageous witness who keeps on taking the first step and then the next. This is the Torah you teach. This is the Torah you live day after day, month after month, year after year, decade after decade. You have been looking. You have been seeing and in the process helping us all see more fully the human beings around us. We cannot measure the hearts you have softened the minds you have opened, the communities you have enriched, the relationships you have repaired, the lives you have changed, the lives, thank God, you have saved. You were probably 20 years old. You said you were 20. I confirmed that this evening when you first came out to me at Yale, sitting on the grass on old campus the first openly gay student active in the Hello community. It's so hard for us to imagine now, to remember how lonely and frightening that must have been. It still is not always easy, but it is infinitely less lonely and less frightening for young LGBTQ people throughout the Jewish community today because of you because of the way you have allowed them to be seen and the change you continue to inspire. I am so deeply grateful. We are all so deeply grateful to be on this journey with you for all the first steps you have taken, for all the next steps we will take together. Adonai Eloheinu velohe avoteinu vimoteinu, shetolichenu l'shalom, v'tatzidenu l'shalom, v'tagiyenu limchoz echepzenu l'chaim u'lesimcha u'lesalom. May you and may all of us be guided towards greater life, joy, and peace, and may we continue to come home to ourselves and to each other in a community, in a world that has room for us all. Wow. Jamie, thank you so much. Sharon, thank you so much. Both of your words were so powerful and just fill my heart. Thank you, Claudia, for hosting tonight's event and inviting us to be here in the beautiful sanctuary at Temple Beth Zion. 
And thank you to everyone at Keshet for honoring me tonight and for giving me the honor of doing this holy work for the past 20 years. To the LeMay family, Mimi, Joe, Jay, Eli, and Lucia, Mazal Tov. And thank you for living your truth with courage, clarity, and integrity. You've made it possible for so many others to feel like they have a place in this world. I'm honored to share this space with you. To Becky, Mazal Tov. Thank you for living your truth with purpose, with curiosity, and deep conviction. Your voice as a rabbi, teacher, mentor, and activist has made it possible for so many to find their own voices and their own power. I'm honored to share this space with you. A couple of years ago, my then four-year-old son, Lior, said to me from the back seat of the car, Ima, when will the work of Keshet be done? I couldn't get from him what prompted the question. He just kept insisting that he really, really, really wanted to know when the work of Keshet would be done. So tonight, I will offer an answer for my little Lior and for anyone else who wants to know. For me, the work of Keshet will be done when young people like Noam and Iz can feel whole and powerful and beautiful as their full queer Jewish selves, not only at the Keshet Shabbaton or in Keshet online spaces, but in every Jewish community. They and other queer Jewish youth will no longer feel like they need to retreat from the rest of the Jewish world in order to be their full selves. Instead, they will able to feel that ease and belonging everywhere. The work of Keshet will be done when Jewish social justice organizations prioritize LGBTQ equality in their work. Jews will mobilize for LGBTQ rights, not despite their identities as Jews, but because of the mandate for justice that we know is at the core of our history and our tradition. The work of Keshet will be done when LGBTQ Jews of all races, ethnicity, socioeconomic backgrounds, and abilities will feel a sense of home and belonging in their Jewish communities. Synagogues, Jewish day schools, Jewish community centers, summer camps, Jewish federations, Jewish families and children's service, all different kinds of Jewish organizations won't wait for people to come out before they begin the work of advancing LGBTQ equality. Instead, these communities will proactively and continuously build a culture of belonging. The work of Keshet will be done when no lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or queer person ever has to wonder for a single moment, will my community still accept me if I come out? Will they still employ me? Will they still love me? So many people have blessed me over the years with their support and trust. It would be impossible for me to name everyone who has helped me reach this day. I want to start by lifting up two people who are no longer with us, each of whom were early angels for me when I was just starting to build Keshet. Marty Spaggett, Zichrono Levracha, Marty was a gay man who was largely closeted when we first met in the late 1990s. He was the first person to make a significant gift to Keshet. I introduced him to Shulamit Eisen, a student at a Boston Jewish high school who campaigned to establish a gay-straight alliance with Keshet's support. And Marty immediately saw in Shulamit's story the opportunity to touch minds and change hearts. Nope, that would be to touch hearts and change minds around the world. He asked me to accept his support to fund a five-minute video profile of her. That soon became an exponentially larger investment that resulted in an hour-long documentary film, Hineni, coming out in a Jewish high school. It was Hineni which launched Keshet as a national organization. And Enid Shapiro, Zichrona Levracha, 
with eternal thanks to Nami Nadich of the Boston JCRC, I was introduced to Enid and Enid invited me to her home. She wrote to me, looking forward to meeting you. I will give you coffee and a bun. She did, and she also adopted me into her enormous community of friends and colleagues, encouraging everyone to take an interest me, in me and the fledgling organization I was trying to get off the ground. I'll never forget being at various Jewish community events where Enid would lead me around announcing my presence. She treated me like an honored guest and insisted that others do the same and take the work of Keshet seriously. Enid and Marty, I hope that I and Keshet have made you proud. I want to offer my enormous gratitude to the entire staff and board of directors of Keshet. You are true partners in this work. I want to particularly thank Seth Marnin, our board chair for nearly three years, for his steady wisdom, friendship, warmth, and unflagging commitment. I want to thank our staff executive team, Lenny Goldstein, Rebecca Ennin, and Suzanne Feinspan, and my assistant, Zane Eitan Diamond. With you as my partners, the weight of the work never feels like it is too much. Thank you for holding it with me and doing so with healthy humor, good spirits, caring, and wise perspective. To all of our supporters, to each one of you who is here tonight, thank you. Thank you for your trust. Thank you for your steadfast commitment. I'm honored to be on this journey with you. I want to give a special shout out and thank you to Stephen Davis, our events manager, who first got involved in Keshet 16 years ago as a volunteer. Stephen brought pizzazz and style to Keshet events way before he was doing so as a professional, yet every step of the way, including, of course, this evening, he has made Keshet shine with his consummate skill and extraordinary heart. Stephen, thank you. And finally, to return to that voice from the back seat of the car, I want to thank my parents, Judith and Andre, and my brother, Ron, for always believing in me and being proud of me, even when I decided not to get my doctorate in English or go to law school. <laughs> my wife, Jordan, for being my partner in all things and for always helping me be my best self. And Lior and Nouriel, my loves, who always light the way forward for me. As some of you know, I lost my beloved Margot, my grandmother, last week, as Sharon mentioned. Tonight marks exactly one month before what would have been her 100th birthday. In, in the memory of my Safta, a bold, beautiful, brave, and hilarious survivor, a woman who deeply believed that a better world is possible. I invite you to join me in saying l'chaim. I can't say when the work of Keshet will be done, but I can say, and I say this without any doubt in my mind whatsoever, that together, all together, we will get there. Thank you. May Safta Margo's memory always be a blessing indeed. Hi everyone, I'm Liana Krupp. My family and I are honored to be supporters of Keshet and I have the great privilege of being a member of Keshet's board and chairing our development committee. I first got involved with Keshet as a way to honor our uncle Richie Rickles' memory and to express my love and gratitude for my best friends, Sam Mendoza Freeman and Dr. Yardin Freeman. I've seen how much Keshet has moved the needle for a more inclusive and life-affirming Jewish life for so many and stand with Keshet as an ally and advocate. As someone who is proud to fund and fundraise for Keshet, I am thrilled that we are here together to celebrate the work of this amazing organization. Thank you for your financial support. You are making it possible for Keshet to reach young LGBTQ Jews to make lasting change in our Jewish communities and to protect and expand LGBTQ civil rights across our country. Hi, I'm Ellie Gurok. 
My family and I are also honored to be supporters of Keshet, and I'm also on the board. I got involved with Kesha because I believe the work that they do is transformational for queer Jews and for their support of queer families like mine. Many of you have given generously to Kesha for years. Thank you. And many of you are joining for the very first time tonight. Welcome and thank you. It takes all of us to do the work of transforming Jewish life and building a more just world. You just saw a video about Kesha's 25 year history and you heard from me decline, my friend and my leader, our leader, about the work for LGBTQ Jews equality and belonging over her lifetime and over the last 20 years at Keshet. I hope you feel as inspired as I do by what we have all accomplished and energized to continue the journey. It is our honor to announce that tonight in celebration of Adit's 20th anniversary at Keshet, we are launching a brand new initiative, Dare to Dream, a campaign for the LGBTQ future, Jewish future. Dare to Dream will feel Keshet as we take on the next challenges facing LGBTQ Jews and our families and communities. You heard earlier about how our dramatically expanded online programs for youth during the pandemic have brought hundreds of new youth into Keshet's programs, many of whom would otherwise not have any way to access support and connection. We are committed to continuing to serve them while also restarting in-person programs in 2022. Your gift tonight to Dare to Dream will make it possible for Kesha to strengthen both our online and in-person youth programs, um, make sure that LGBTQ youth nationwide have a place where they can see and be their full selves. Your gift tonight to Dare to Dream will also help build Kesha presence in cities and states with thriving Jewish communities, but anti-LGBTQ political climates like Florida, Texas, Arizona, and Ohio. Hundreds of thousands of LGBTQ Jews live in states where their rights and safety are under threat. Your support means that Keshet can help create Jewish communities of belonging in those states and mobilize those communities to fight for LGBTQ rights. One of the things that I love about Edith is that she's game. She looks for the, new, for the next new challenge and run towards it. Your support tonight helps ensure that whatever the future offers, Edith and her team will be ready to take it on strategically, thoughtfully, and effectively. That's why we call this campaign Dare to Dream, because throughout the last 20 years, Edith has always dared to dream big, and we all see the impact. I know that you have already made a gift to be here tonight. And I ask you now to join me, Liana, and our families in making an extra gift to Dare to Dream campaign. Look at the bottom of your left of your screen, look to your left for the donate button. And you can click there to make your gift now. Now I see so much brokenness in the world. Do you, do you ever see that? Do you feel that way too? If you do, and you wanna make change, that there are few people that I know of who can make as direct an impact as Edith. And I think we saw that tonight when we heard from her. So dream with me and, and Liana and support Edit and catch with life-saving work and make a gift right now. Now, please join me in honoring Edith for 20 years of bold and strategic leadership. Your gift will ensure that Kesha continues to dream and act boldly. Together, we are building the world as it should be. Thank you for your generosity and your steadfast commitment. Hey, everybody. Is this thing on? <laughs> I'm Faith and I am honored to be a chair, an honorary chair, a human, a human chair, you know, all of that. But you know what? This isn't about me. It's really not. Maybe it is about me because if I knew myself better a little earlier, then I wouldn't have to obsess about the many me's that are now at this relatively late state of age coming to life. A lot of gender issues, people. <laughs> I mean, Maybe if I would have had Keshet in my life, see how I've made that work, I, I, I would be like these, these, can I say badasses? Okay, there are badasses out there. I mean, Queen Ultraviolet. I mean, Jay, I mean, come on. I mean, if I had had Keshet when I was younger, you wouldn't see this middle-aged boy chick maybe would have had transitioned, probably should have transitioned. I didn't, I've got issues. None of that. You wouldn't see this 
constantly questioning, constantly really boring people about my gender journey in this late age. If I would have had Keshet, maybe I wouldn't have had to write this song. How many of you love, love Joni Mitchell? I can't hear you. I don't know why I even asked that. A little parody for you. My idea of gender. Gender is just sausage casing. We're all twisted up links and still retracing our blue and pink DNA. But sausage is also brown and gray. Hey, I wish I had a gender I could skate away on. Gender is just the grammar. We're swimming and we're drowning in words like men and women and all the he's and hers and he's and him's. How about these days and thems? Oh, I wish I had a pronoun I could skate away on. Sausage casing. I, I guess it's more than sausage casing. Uh, um, and I guess it all makes sense for me. After all, I do have a transparent. Sorry, I had to do that. Maybe I'm still working out some of that inherited good old Jewish traumatic trauma shame. Hey, speaking of shame, uh, how much have you guys spent on Amazon instead of just going to CVS? And instead of just going to CVS, right now we should donate. Donate so that the children don't turn out like me. Gender is more than just sausage casing. It's a place of questioning. It's a place of celebration. And I do wish I had Keshet. And all serious, in all seriousness, I am wishing Adit and everybody here a fantastic night. Please do donate. I am honored to be here. And thank you for being around, Keshet. That's all I got. Wow, <laughs> thank you for that, Faith. Here at uh, TVZ, we are laughing and having a great time. We're so grateful to you. Um, and thank you to everyone who is here tonight. Thank you to our honorary hosts, committee, and sponsors, to all our wonderful honorees and presenters and our special guests. And as Ellie and Liana said, a big thank you to everyone who has ever donated to Keshet, everyone who gave so that we could be together tonight, and everyone who is going to continue to support Keshet or become a new Keshet supporter. I don't know about you, but I am feeling outstanding right now. So I just wanted to share this. I've been loving this. I'm just having a good time playing with this. Um, so feeling outstanding right now. And I want to also raise one more time a glass of wine and say lechaim and thank you. I want to um, uh, uh, thank everybody for being here. So lechaim to all of you here with my keshet. Lechaim. And um, before I'm going to turn it, um, it, it, is, it has been such a special time. And as others have said, while well, I've been sad, we aren't getting to hug each other quite yet, I'm grateful. We have been able to be together with people from across the US and so many new folks and people who wouldn't have been able to make it to Boston in a normal year. And in just a moment, we'll have Alexandra Silver, West End and Broadway performer, sing us out. But before I turn it over to Al, I want to say a huge, huge thank you to the Keshet staff who have been working for months to bring us together. And especially, I want to wrap my arms from a distance around the chief architect and outstanding planning maven, Stephen Davis. Stephen, this is for you. Who is the person whose warmth and vision you feel shining through everything tonight? Thank you, Stephen. Ke thank you, Stephen. And Keshet invites you to stay on Shindig after Alexandra's performance, to connect with one another, and to stay connected with us. And now, Alexandra Silver. What an outstanding evening. Hello, I am Alexandra Silver, Broadway and West End actor, singer, author, and I'm a proud Jewish artist and queer ally. Mazel tov to the LeMay family and to Rabbi Becky Silverstein on these well-deserved honors. 
and of course to Edith for 20 years of dedication and hard work envisioning a world in which all LGBTQ plus Jews and their families can live with full equality, justice, and of course, dignity, grasping at that Jewish concept of joy. As an ally in your holy work, I hope this song from a Broadway musical will be a meaningful way to close. Thank you again. When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. So we see the